Hello my fellow geeks, I'm Mark and today on Elite Geek we're going to install another screen protector except this time on the Frozen Mighty 4K. My 4K just came and I've been doing a little bit of testing with it but I'm nervous without a screen protector on it. So I think I found the best solution here. I've learned a lot from discussions on Facebook and doing this on other devices so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here and then I'll test it for a little bit. I'm not even going to assume you know how to install a screen protector this time which I didn't think that would be a problem, but apparently it was. And then as long as it works, I'll show you the results. So what I'm gonna install is the Super Shields. Now I know these are not available everywhere. There's different brands all over the world. I'll link ones down below that seem to be available. The important thing is these are anti-glare or matte, either one for the iPad Air, Air 2, the 9.7 inch model. So these are smaller than the ones I've used before. I actually ordered these specifically for this purpose and I'll show you why. You're also gonna need some Kapton tape. This is not real Kapton tape, I don't think. It's just high heat, high temperature, thin, super, super thin tape to, in order to tape down the edges of this. And you're gonna need some scissors. So let's look at why this is gonna work. So the thing is, the layout of the Mighty is just a little different than with the Mono X that I did before. Hopefully I'll get to do this with a Saturn here soon too. So we have a matte protector with two sides on it. One was the side that'll go down, two is the side that'll go up. This actually does have a hole in it, which is going to work out perfectly for us here with the Mighty. And then there's a, a, a part for what would be a microphone on it. And we're gonna actually use that here in just a second because we're gonna take the scissors and we're gonna take this spot and I'm going to cut out to this hole. So I'm going to go a, just a little bit wide to it and cut to the edges just like that. See, there's one side. Again, everything is harder with a camera in the way. There we go. So I just cut a slot there. Now we're gonna go look at why I did that. Okay, so now this is why we use this specific protector. See that one hole right there? See this post? That is gonna go right over there, just like that, right in the center. And we're gonna apply this and get it so it lines up right here with this other post. And that will get us all in place and covered and protected and everything will be perfect. Right? Yeah, that's the goal. So before we do that, one thing you wanna do, I've already done this part. Uh, you wanna take some window cleaner and your microfiber disposable claws, clean that really, really well. Make sure you don't have anything on there. Inside your pack, even if you don't get Super Shields, probably is gonna come with a microfiber cloth. So we wanna go over this just to make sure you don't feel anything. This needs to be really, really clean at this point. You wanna get it as clean as you can. I can see some streaks that were left by my window cleaner. I'm gonna buff those out just a little bit. Make sure there isn't any dust on this thing at all. I'm a little crazy with these things, but I want them to be perfect. I think, I think I got it. So your protectors might have come with a card on it. You can also use a credit card, but mine came with one, so I'm gonna use this one. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the number one side, peel this back just a little bit. Not, do not, do not take this off at this point. Also, once you touch the bottom side of this, don't touch it again. So I'm gonna get this lined up as close as I can with the center part of that post. Hold this in place and what I wanna do right now is make sure this lines up. Over here, you can see, hear that? It's pretty close, it's probably close enough, honestly. I could twist it just a hair. There we go. Now I wanna seal down this part to the frame. Make sure that's connected well. Put my card right here. I'm gonna slowly start peeling this back while I apply as even pressure as I can with this card. We'll go about halfway until we can see what we've done. That looks really good. 
That looks really good. Keep going, keep going. I'm not gonna pull this last little bit until I get all as close as I can to this edge. And there, oh man, I had one bubble. One bubble that I can get rid of really easy. So now with this, this does have a little give to it. And that is, uh, that's actually good because it allows me to apply pressure. Now you can rub on this part at this point because we have a second protector on top. This is again, specific for this brand. It could be a little different with yours, but I'm gonna assume they're all gonna be pretty close. So I'm gonna go and rub this edge, get any, any stray spots that I can, get as close to this edge. Now you don't have to get all the way to the edge of this tape because your vat doesn't actually go that far. We'll look at that here in a minute. You're not going to be able to. Now mine, with my other printer, this center part was down a whole lot further and this wouldn't have worked. I had to install a first protector on there to get it level with this tape. You could also replace this black tape with Kapton tape because Kapton tape is thinner. I considered that, but I don't think it's necessary. So let me grab my bat. And by bat, I mean screen. So you can see here, it, well, you know what, on this one, it is, it does go pretty much all the way to the edge. So I'm gonna work on getting the rest of those bubbles out. This one is a little bit different. So with this, I'm gonna say, I probably would recommend replacing this tape with Kapton tape first, because it'll be thinner and you'll get rid of this edge bubble a little bit. Um, I, I can't do that anymore because I went through my pack of screen protectors trying to sort out the best way to do this. Now, I will also recommend, once you get this in place, that you leave it here for say 24 hours just to make sure it adheres all the all the way so that's good the bubbles around this edge they don't matter at all those wrinkles that you see that's my stupid ugly wallpaper in this bathroom so now I have to go get my tape now because I don't have time to follow my own advice I'm gonna hold down this corner say you waited 24 hours just to be safe which would be prudent now we will peel off this back edge. Now I'm not just going to rip this off. I'm actually going to clip on this side so it fits over this post easily. There we go. See there, you see I started to peel that corner up. That's what we don't want to do. There we go. Now having waited longer would help with that. Now I'm not touching the screen, I'm touching just the edges to make sure it doesn't come up. Now the tape comes into play. Now this will just help seal this edge and help hold it down just in case for two reasons. One, it'll help hold the whole thing in place and keep it from moving. Two, it will also provide a seal around this edge in case you get resin spilled here, it won't come under the edge of your screen protector. That's kind of an ugly cut, but it'll work. So I'm gonna apply two here, one on this edge on the inside of the screw. Just to get that seal inside there where it's most likely to go one on the outside edge. So here's a little harder because I have to go underneath the bar, that laser thing, the Z sensor. We'll cover up those screws, but this will be fine. We'll just take this off if we ever need to get in there. Hopefully we don't. If we do, I'm sure that'll be another video. Here again, we're gonna go with two pieces, one on the inside, mainly to get that part right there, which is the most vulnerable part of this. I'm actually gonna have to do two here because it doesn't quite fit around that edge. So I'm gonna get this flat. So part of the reason we use this tape is because of how flat it is. Even the layers of it are far thinner than the black electrical tape that they use. There we go. Now it took a few tries. I had to get, I could not get this edge 
quite clean enough. So now I got that, so I'm happy with it. Ow. Okay. And there. So now that I got all that installed, now we have to re-level it. Thankfully, on this, it's very easy to do. Okay, so I just had to clean this. I wanted to make sure it was super clean for this purpose. So now I'll put it back on. Okay, so now I have reinstalled my build plate. I've got it tight here. I've got a piece of US letter paper, letter size paper. We're gonna install that right there. Okay, so now on the printer, we're gonna go to tools and do a Z calibration. These instructions are like the easiest thing I've ever seen. Put one piece of paper, unscrew four screws on the build platform. Oh yes, we're gonna do that. All right, so I'm gonna use a three millimeter wrench, the same one I use for all of these projects. We're gonna loosen these screws. There we go, you can see it move. I have printed with this, so I'm not gonna touch these build plates without gloves on. But the important thing is, it uh, it's a little tight. It needs to be a little looser. I want it to float freely. There we go, that's better. Now back down to the bottom. Make sure they're loose. I like these instructions. Next, wait until the build platform moves down to the bottom. This takes forever. One eternity later. So one problem, I really like how wide this is, but it does make it hard to balance this. So I apply pressure basically like with a rock and roll, dude, because that's all the wider my fingers are. I try and get on the center of the plate and I'm going to finger tighten each of these. This is the other place where I really like using this instead of the Allen wrenches that it comes with. It's much easier to reach. It's much easier, I think, to ply precise feel with my fingertips with this grip. Probably go around three times. There we go. So those are all good and finger tight. I think I've got pretty good even pressure here. So now I can crank these down. I think I can crank them down without making it move, which is the problem when they're not all tight, it can move. So then, oh, I don't think that's even enough. See, I can move that side, but not that side. That's no good. So I need to apparently loosen this side. Apparently I, my rock and roll did not apply enough pressure. I've never had to do it this way before. This will be unique. We'll see how well it works. There we go. Now it's tight. Now it feels consistent. Now, hit done. It'll go back up. Now it'll come out. All right, next test, printing. We'll see how that goes. We'll be back. Okay, so the results are in and I, I couldn't be happier. I recorded that right at a week ago and I've been printing nonstop on this thing ever since. This was the very first print that I took off of it. This is kind of my default just test print just to make sure it worked at all and it worked great. Then this is a test of printing all the way to the edge. So here are some more models and I actually had, there's a support here that I had sticking over the edge just to see what would happen and obviously it didn't print, but everything else right up to the edge printed just fine. So I went and printed all the way around. So that one's all the way, I got that thing all the way to the edge there. And it printed without any issue at all, just across the board. There's another look at that one where I'm just like, I'm past the edge of the screen, so it doesn't work. I printed full build plates. So here, these are all right off. These have all been completely unwashed. These are just taken straight off and, uh, photos just to show that it worked so pretty full there that one's pretty darn full and everything there turned out without problem i didn't have a single failure in the whole plate so this is the amerilabs print that you saw in that very first photo that i took most of the detail is pretty darn good now i do scale these up just a little bit this is not the straight uh 100 scale got some weird lines down here it looks like i didn't get it washed real well but i don't worry about these all that much Overall, compared to others that I've done, I'm I'm perfectly, perfectly happy with that. Here's a shot of what was cleaned up from those or some of those earlier shots where I've uh, cured these and then cleaned them up. And I haven't 
totally finish them, but I got a macro lens add-on to work with my phone. I couldn't get that to work very well, but I tried to get some more shots. So that's basically just zoomed in. You can see how small that is. Those are my fingers. Don't try and steal my phone with my fingerprint now. Overall, I'm perfectly happy with these models. They are going to look great on the tabletop. There you go. Hopefully somebody will find this helpful. But if you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below. I sure feel a whole lot better now having a protector on here, just in case. Just in case. Man, screens are expensive. Screen protectors are cheap. I'm a big advocate for using these iPad screen protectors. I just saw a post on Facebook this morning of someone who used a FEP, and when their regular printing FEP got damaged, it also damaged their protective FEP that they had put down, and it just went right through and ruined the screen anyway. So I like these protectors. That's not going to happen. You're not going to puncture all the way through the screen protector. And to be super clear, these are not glass protectors. Those are too thick, I think and they won't sit as flush. They're, they're, I'm afraid they'll crack because I don't think you're gonna be able to get them to sit fully flush. They're going to bow a little bit and they're just gonna crack pretty quickly. So I think these old fashioned plastic matte protectors are the best option. But with that, so until next time, remember, if you're gonna be a geek, be an elite geek and don't ruin your screen. These screens, I don't, I don't even know how much these are. For the other one, they're like 130 to 180 dollars. Protectors are what? $7 for three of them?